In mobile robotics, obstacle avoidance is a critical functionality that prevents your robot from crashing into obstacles. A good obstacle avoidance system will always minimize the damage inflicted upon the robot while traveling through the environment, and in the same time prevent the robot from causing damage to its potentially valuable surroundings. This is why it is very important to fundamentally understand how obstacle avoidance works and how to apply it to your robot. In my experience, the best way to learn things is to do them yourself. So in today's video, we will simulate and visualize an obstacle avoidant differential drive robot equipped with an ultrasonic sensor. To begin with, we will need some tools to build our simulation. The most important of which is the kinematics model of the robot you are going to use. The differential drive robot to be used in this video is a simple robot that relies on the difference in velocities between the right and the left driving wheels. Hence the name, differential drive. And if you take a look at the equations that makes up its kinematics model, you will notice that in the third equation, related to the heading or the orientation, the VR minus VL term comes up. Its linear velocity is just the mean of the driving wheel's velocities, so the entire process of driving this robot will be done simply by changing VR and VL values. The other important thing to prepare beforehand is the environment map and the robot itself. The environment can be easily drawn using MS Paint, so I'll just provide the desired size to MS Paint properties and then draw the walls in the indoor environment as rectangles. The map is then saved as a PNG picture and stored in the project folder, along with the robot picture which I drawn using Photoshop. Both of these files by the way can be downloaded from the link in the description below. The preparations are now finished, and all we have left to do is to code. So this project will be divided into two files. The first one named robot which will contain three classes, the robot class, the graphics class, and the ultrasonic class. The first one will contain the methods for moving the robot based on the kinematics model we just seen previously. The graphics class will be responsible for visualizing the simulation on the screen, and this will be done using the Pygame module. The ultrasonic class pretty much speaks for itself. It will simulate an ultrasonic sensor giving a 2D point cloud representing the phased obstacles in the environment. So let's begin by importing the Pygame, the Math and the NumPy modules. And by the way, if you don't have one of these already, you can easily install them using the command pip install in the terminal. To begin with, we're gonna define a function called distance that can calculate the Euclidean distance between two points in the environment. The robot class will be initialized using the start position of the robot and its base width. This M2P attribute is important to convert any meter units to pixels in order to be drawn in the screen. So, as we said earlier, the right wheel and the left wheel velocities are important, so we will initialize them to be 1 cm per second, and we also make maximum and minimum values for the velocities. The minimum distance for the robot to obstacle that can be allowed is 100 pixels, but you can change this to your liking. This last attribute is a countdown set to 5 seconds but we won't be needing it until later, so let's just carry on for now. At this point, I know you think I should start coding the kinematics of the vehicle first, but before, let's start with the obstacle avoidance and move backwards. The obstacle avoidance algorithm I'm going to use in this video is a fairly simple one. The robot will move forward, and if the ultrasonic sensor data indicated the closed obstacle, we're just gonna move backwards and then keep going in a forward direction. So we start by defining a method that takes the point cloud provided by the sensor and the time step dt as arguments. We initialize the closest obstacle to be none and its distance from the robot to be infinite for now. We also set a condition. If the point cloud list that contains the coordinates of the measured obstacles is not empty, which means data are arriving from the sensor, we make a loop through it, searching for the closest obstacle to our robot using these three lines of code. The third line is for storing the closest obstacle coordinates and distance in a tuple. 
If this distance is less than a minimum safe value, however, we move backwards using this method that we will create in a moment. In the if statement, you have to also make a condition that ensures you don't move backwards forever. If you remember, we set the countdown variable in the init method to be 5 seconds, and each time we execute this method, we should subtract an amount dt, which indicates how much time have passed since the last call of this method. So, long story short, when this countdown variable gets to 0, we will stop moving backwards, and instead we will reset the countdown to 5 and move forward from there. The move backward and move forward methods are so simple, they just change the right and the left wheel speed in order to produce the desired motion. And in the case of backward motion, the right wheel velocity will be just minus the minimum speed and the left one will be minus half of the minimum speed making the robot move backwards in a circular trajectory rather than a linear one. And finally, the kinematics are set using the forward kinematics model described at the beginning of the video, but with a simple twist. The y-axis movement should be inverted to account for the inverted world frame of the computer screen. But aside from that, everything stays the same. Once the x and y and headings value are calculated, we don't forget to reset the heading value to zero if it gets off the 2 pi bounds in order to avoid angle wrapping which will produce weird and desired behavior of the vehicle. Lastly, and this is optional, you can set the VR and the VL to have minimum and maximum velocities just like this. The graphics of the simulation are shown on the screen using this class that takes the dimension of the environment along with the robot and the map images as arguments. The Pygame init method is called first thing, and then a bunch of RGB colors are declared. We also load the robot and the map images using the Pygame image load method like this. And also let's separate the height and width to make life easier for ourselves. The next thing is setting up the window name and creating a blank canvas using the user defined dimensions and then draw the map that we made in MS Paint right on top of it using the blitz method from Pygame. In order to draw the robot we define a method that takes the x, y and heading as arguments and then using the roto zoom method from Pygame to rotate the robot image proportionally to the heading. After that, the center of the robot image is translated to the calculated x and y from the robot kinematics, and use the bounding rectangle returned from this process to draw the robot image on top of the map. If you want to draw your sensor readings, just define a function that takes the point cloud and draw all of its points in the screen, using the draw circle method from Pygame. And as simply as this, we can now visualize our simulation all thanks to Pygame. But we are not finished just yet. The most exciting part of this video is creating the ultrasonic sensor. This class is initialized using the sensor range and the map. For sensing close obstacles, we pass the robot coordinates and the heading to this method. We create an empty list to store the obstacles and we set the X and Y coordinates names to X1 and Y1. As you probably know, the ultrasonic sensor can't scan all the 360 degrees. Most of them can only scan a cone-shaped area. This is why we are simulating this by declaring the variables start angle and finish angle, which are just the heading of the robot plus minus the sensor angle range. When that is finished, we loop ranging from the start angle and finish by the finish angle, taking 10 values in between, which can be changed of course based on the desired resolution. At each angle, we need to create a line segment starting from the robot position and ending at the point x2, y2. The distance between x1, y1 and x2, y2 is the sensor linear range. The x2, y2 point is then calculated easily using this formula. We have now to take samples along this line segment using this linear interpolation formula.
and at each sample, and if the sample is located inside our map, we get the pixel color and we color it by a different color. If the sample color is black, this means we collided with an obstacle at this particular angle. So we just append the coordinates of the obstacle and break the sampling loop since we don't have to continue sampling along this line anymore. This will be similar to the real life situation where the ultrasonic waves are reflected from the surface of the first obstacle they face. At last, when we finish our angles loop, we return the obstacle list. By doing this, we finish the robot file, and all we have to do now is to use its classes in the main file. In addition to the necessary map and Pygame modules, we import the three classes we just created in the robot file, we also initialize the map dimensions, and we create an instance of the graphics class, passing the dimensions along with the robot image and the obstacle map as arguments. Right after that, we declare the start position and we pass it to the robot constructor, along with the robot width in pixels. The sensor range is a tuple containing the distance and the angle ranges. We pass it as an argument to the ultrasonic class sensor along with the map. In order to keep track of the time lapse between loop iterations, we need to create these two variables, dt and last time. We also declare the variable named running to easily terminate the simulation loop whenever we want to. In the while loop, we check the Pygame quit event. This event happens whenever we click the exit button on the Pygame window. If that happens, we just set the running variable to false and the simulation will be terminated. Else, we proceed by calculating the dt variable which is the current time minus the last time over 1000 to give us the result in seconds. First thing first, we draw the map on the empty canvas we have right now. After that, we move the robot using the kinematics and we draw it using this method. Then we just call the sense obstacles method, producing a point cloud which will be used to avoid obstacles and also to be drawn in the screen, just like this. The last step is to always update the screen in order to show the latest changes and we are done. This simulation is now functional, we can see clearly now that the differential drive robots have exactly the expected behavior and it moves autonomously in the environment without colliding with any obstacles. But today's video is just one step towards making a fully autonomous vehicle. If you like this video, you can check out other tutorials I made in this subject and to make sure you won't miss any future videos, just click the subscribe button and as always, I'll see you in another video with another idea. Goodbye.